It's the classic series, November 17th, do, 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 which means what? what? Means <laughs> the holidays are coming. Holidays are coming, yes. Well, we had a holiday last night. Where? Well, at uh, my friend's house, who's a chef, and he made some great food. Unfortunately, we had to watch a ball game. Oh, yeah. Well, I was. Uh, we, I went to the game the night before, which was incredible. Well, yeah. Yeah, that was an incredible game. We were talking, of course, about the World Series. For those of you that don't live in Los Angeles, there you go. Two different teams, two different nights. Um, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. 40 years ago. 40 years ago, my dad was watching the game because he's from Cairo and knows nothing about baseball. Okay. <laughs> I know. Actually... I think this is the f how many years since the November World Series game, actually. It's been like a long time. I don't know. that. It, I, I think there's been one November World Series because yeah. because they've, you know, they've, they've added teams and they've added playoffs, so it stretches. I mean, it was always an, Oct an October event, and now it's a November event. But 40 years ago, oh, yeah, Wine of the Month Club. I didn't look it up. Very interesting. Very, very I, you know, I love hey, your dad. I mean, he was so awesome. far ahead of his so... time. He had a Curry Chardonnay from Oregon. Really? Yeah. Wow. And I remember that wine. It was it was pretty <coughs> interesting. But your dad was always trying to really stretch the envelope well, a little bit yeah, from Oregon. Then. And these vineyards in Oregon have been planted in the fifties. It was a very. Well, I read the story. The Pinot Noirs were not even drinkable, really. Back I, then. I I don't remember to tell you the truth. I mean, there were a few of them that were were pretty good, but then um, but the red was Castel Danielis. Don't worry, you're not boring me. Aquila Kraus. Klaus. It was a Greek wine. Oh, wow. Akia Klaus. Now, remember, okay, I can't tell you the last time I tasted a Greek wine. I, I, I can. I think that was it. <laughs> no, but I mean like Namia and Butari and all those things. I haven't seen any of those forever. Now, you know, the problem is is that they are so huh. unfamiliar to our taste buds. Yeah, that is bizarre. You know, I mean, and when you consider the importance that the Greeks had in spreading uh, vine culture all across Europe, they planted vines, you know, in in Italy and in in uh, in, uh, in Spain and France, and you know, and and the vines they grow well, quite honestly, aren't very good. <laughs> I'll make sure my dad knows uh, that you told me he's a genius. Oh, I love him. I mean, yeah. I mean, Cal who was pouring wines from Oregon forty years ago? Oh, come on. Nobody. Go ahead, keep pouring it. Okay. Well, me. our first. Hey, hey, hey. I never mind you. Never mind you. <laughs> um, I tell you, this wine, I, 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 I don't know the people involved. What did you say? Yeah, I didn't hear that. <laughs> I don't know the people involved, but I was absolutely blown away by how good this wine is. It's just, it's a blend of different grapes. I forgot which, and they don't even tell you. But yeah, this was a this was a dark dark horse. Delicious wine. Absolutely. A dark delicious. leaping horse. Is whatever. Mm -hmm. No, I. I Never seen it before, never tasted it before. The, the, the broker, or the, the representative of the winery comes in all the time. And all of a sudden, in fact, most of the varietals that they had I thought were really good. Um, well, I'll tell you, you know, on nose and flavor, and you you tell me this is a 40 or $50 Napa Valley Cabernet, I am not going to argue with you. Mm. You know, I mean, because I've tasted worse uh, for a lot more money. This is one of the best buys I've, I, we've got. I mean, this wow. is really an unbelievable bottle of wine. You know, really... Usually these things are chapterized and well, yeah, yeah, they're they're messed with and yeah. they, they don't have, they don't have a sense of place. I mean, um, this glass was smelly, so hey, it's a, let that be a lesson to you, folks. Smell that glass at the restaurant because sometimes it tastes smell bad like this one did before I pour this. This wine, is so. uh, this is a uh, Zinfandel Pinot Noir or Petit Sirah rather, and um, and Merlot. Wow. I get the Zin. I yeah, definitely the get the I don't get the Petit Sirah. Well, the Petit Sirah you're going to get in the finish because it's got that nice little grip at the end. And, I mean, it's, it's really a spectacular, very, very well-made wine. It's got a little oak. Mm-hmm. That's a 96 for me. Wow. Easily. I mean... All right, so we have to come up with a new system because I am taking our database of tasted wines and making it public. Making it public to who? The public. Oh, you know, like in post offices and places like that? Right? <laughs> exactly. It's a sign of the picture. No, I mean, we do all this stuff. We do all the things that all these other organizations do, uh, like the magazines, and we stake our reputation out to the extent that we stay in business because of what we recommend. Yeah. But we don't We do not do anything with the ratings, and we do the same thing. Why don't we publicize that? Well, that's a brilliant idea. You know, why, see, why didn't we're I We're going to have, like, how many gray hairs? You got three gray hairs. <laughs> I got a few gray hairs. $7.99 is a reorder price. $18.99 on the shelf is a steal. 
$7.99 is an even better steal. So steal that one. All right, so you were making a comment last week or last month that we did two, my dad did two res days in a row, and I wasn't planning on it because A, the Isabel was very well received, and so I was excited about that. It's a phenomenal that. bottle of wine. And, Absolutely. And, he, and then this guy favorites. walked in with this, and I freaked out over it. Uh, mm. it you know, it's a different style, but like, the nose is just like, it just jumps out at you. Wow. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. And this is from Italy. From it's a drier Italy. version of what we just had. Mm-hmm. It's nice and fresh, but this is the Mediterranean. Mediterranean. <laughs> you know, everybody's trying Chateau to. Chateau Perry. Try, they're all trying to elbow each other for some position in Those the wine business. De la Combe. And this is imported by Quincy. I just thought it was very refreshing, very good with turkey, and, and across the variety of food stuffs we're going to have. Could I have it without turkey? Come Thanksgiving. I don't do turkey. What are you gonna make? What are you gonna make? I'm gonna make duck. I always make duck. That's what I have for Thanksgiving. Why would anybody eat turkey when you can eat duck? I don't get it. Or pheasant. I'll do pheasant. This would great with duck. It'll great with pheasant. Really good with pheasant. Boy, you know I love the nose in this. It's really, yeah. it's really yeah, it's exotic. Just, the nose has more f character in it. Yeah, this I like is the really a delicious, wine. delicious wine. You know. Uh, Twenty bucks is what this thing sells for, and it's six ninety nine on a reorder price. And I'm doing another ninety six on this one. I think this is just delicious. Well, I wanted to show it because the last one we did, it wasn't the sugar wasn't like white Zinfandel, but it had some sugar in it, and it, they had blended muscat into it. But this is more typical, you know, Provence, south of France. Though it's not from the south of France, but it's dry. It's south of Italy, which is saying we know, and that's cold. That's enough. Wait, it's close enough. How do you know it's from the south of Italy? Because it says Puy in there, doesn't it? And that's no, that's like... Protégé. Oh, well. No, it's Mediterranean. Oh, it's Mediterranean. Sure, okay. So it's, it's a little and salty. It, and if you drink enough, you can look at the optical it's a, illusion. It's a little salty. <laughs> it, actually, you know what? It's funny. It's got a little bit. Well, it's got, yeah, a little saline, I guess, if, you know. But regardless, at, at six ninety nine, it's another 96. It's a delicious bottle of wine. So there. You chill that down and serve it with your pheasant. Huh? No, I oh, will serve... <laughs> culture wrong with my pheasant. Mm. That'd be good too. Oh, this is another killer bottle. You know, revisited by these guys. We featured this years ago. New vintage, of course. But Sebastian, he's coming in today, actually. He's, this is guy is a, a family of uh, Chilean uh, um, makers, friends and family that he brings in. Delicious. And this is one he's has brought in many times. And I just... You know, I did... My problem with, with wines like this is that when I hear the word Torriga Nacional, I automatically like it because that is one of my favorite grapes ever. It's a principal grape in port, mm. but a lot of people wow. are now using it to make dry red wines, and bad. they are out of this world. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I thought this was the Vallejos. No, this is Malbec from, hey, from, from You know, from this Washington. right there, it says Pascual Toso Malbec. I can't read that. <laughs> And this is not, not say, from. Sebastian. Remember what I said for the next for the next. Uh, the, the this next is edition. from Alex Guarchi. Oh, you're kidding! No, good old Alex. And you know, like he, this guy. There's a guy that came to Wine of the Month Club about 20 years ago, and I mm -hmm. bought his first container of wine. And he 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 admitted recently to me. He goes, when I left your office, I I said to myself, I'm really in business, because that was the first container he had ever sold. And we've been buying from him for years, but he's gotten so big, you know. Try and get his attention. So well, he's gotten big, and then he's gotten small, and then he sold his company, and now he's got another company. And you know, the wine business is um, uh, not that easy. <laughs> and the reason I chose this wine was just quintessential Malbec. It's, it's absolutely got all delicious. The of Malbec. It yeah, really without well, being overdone on one area or the other. But it doesn't taste like it's all Malbec. Is there Cabernet in here or Merlot or something? That's why I'm saying it's not. It's the nose is Malbec. But well, yeah, but there's... But it's not as spicy as it, it can be. It's, it, it, well, it doesn't have that, that kind of grip, gripping acidity that Malbec can have, too. Right. Especially when it comes from Cahor. Which it's horrible. Is, oh, God. <laughs> I say that to people that like it. They go, oh, what's wrong with you? Well, well, there's been one or two lately that have one been... One or two out horrible. of... I don't know, man. <laughs> I said that to the other day to some, a vendor. Oh, this is horrible. <laughs> anyway, this is a 97 for me. I, I just think this Delicious is a really special one. one. Go ahead. Boy, you know you're, you're three bargain. for three. It's a great bargain. I don't. Uh, I, 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 Eighteen ninety nine on a shelf, seven ninety nine for more. Ninety six. You're not going to find wines like that. No, oh, you're really not. You really are not right, going to so find that. 
So it told me what it, he goes. You know that Count Corolli. That stuff is kind of bizarre. I said it is. We don't get to do Gruner Veltliners too often, and I chose it because it it's pretty indicative of what it is. And what I can't remember where it's from. It's so Hungary. All I think. No, no, no. Oh, it's yeah, Panama, yeah, Hungary, yeah. So I just thought it was a great opportunity to taste Hungarian wine, uh, and it's you know, it's not an indigenous grape necessarily, but well, it's an indigenous grape of Austria, which is you know next door. So I mean, it's 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 like you know, um, one of the wines we're going to taste in another club uh, is in is in um, in in north and now north I remember. western Spain, and it, one of the grapes is what is isn't also in Portugal, right next door. I mean, it, it, just because there's a political line here doesn't mean that that the that the uh, the climate or the that's or the true. Yeah, the weather changes. Change. You know, when great. you look at Hungary, you know how close Hungary is to, to Italy. You know what it's next lunch? door. We have Hungary. We're having barbecue. All right. So oh, good. Yeah. So I mean, you're right. You know, so so it's not that much of a stretch. The problem with Hungary and Romania and Poland, they were all under, you know, the Soviet Union. So they w were a little late in getting to the table with wine, but they can make some great wines. Absolutely Actually, you're right because right. Budapest, which is a very interesting town, is you My walk through it and you get you get visions of old the Soviets, where there's mundane, no nondescript building, and then you get this sort of modern European town, and they're wrestling with this identity. Uh, I think this is great for the uh, Thanksgiving fair. Absolutely, no, They're without really question, because it's dry, it's crisp, it, 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 yet it has some character to it. Seventeen ninety nine on the shelf. Would you stop agreeing with me with that? Okay, the wine sucks. All right, we're gonna six nine for more. Yeah, ninety six points. You agree to that? I'll agree to that. <laughs> that's, that's what it says over there. Yeah. <laughs> I read that. All right, that's our show for today. Mm -hmm. God, one you know, more this month. Little semi empty glass test. Well, Wait, no, how about a totally empty glass test? You get more you get more nose out of the empty glass than you, you do, do. <laughs> well, because because you're also smelling what's around it. And That's nice. Stop shooting the audience.